egoic thinking is the enemy of intuition. Evolutionary psychology tells us that the human ego is a survival mechanism that has been with us for many, many millennia and has allowed our species to survive and even prosper in a somewhat hostile environment. And this has been going on for millions of years. This is why we develop the ego. It's a survival mechanism. And the ego works by categorizing things and uh, experiences in the world uh, as either helpful or harmful to our survival. The ego creates a world of dualities, of polar opposites. It's quite understandable, really, that there should be a part of our psyche that does this, given uh, the ongoing imperative to survive in, you know, in a world that is binary. The ego is also strengthened and defined by conflict. It uh, often creates this conflict where none need exist. The world's full of people whose lives consist of one conflict-driven drama after another. They're locked in an egoic state of mind, dancing to these ancient war drums that have been beating in our minds since the Pleistocene era, from about 2 million years ago, right up until about 11,000 years ago, which is uh, the time when humans started to evolve. But as humanity does evolve to higher levels of consciousness, we start to see that having solved or eliminated most of the problems and dangers that uh, had threatened our ancestors, then egoic thinking as a survival mechanism is really no longer as helpful as it once was. Take, for example, our instinct to eat uh, salty or fatty or sweet foods. Uh, in the evolutionary past, this was so we might store energy in the form of body fat and have it in reserve for the next time food is scarce, which happened quite often. In the past, in that evolutionary past, it was impossible to find so much salty, fatty, sweet food that it would actually do you any harm if you ate all that you could find. So we're programmed to eat as much of it as we can find and as often as possible. But in today's world, we have to curb this tendency if we're not going to become obese. Our higher rational self needs to recognize that seeing the world through uh, the eyes of our primitive ancestors uh, where danger lurks behind every bush, is really no longer helpful to our well-being. Here's another example how our primitive natures no longer serve us well. Uh, we see this in the, in the religious concept of the seven deadly sins. Uh, these serve as a warning to avoid certain behaviours that might... Um, put a person at risk. You know, it was framed in the sense that it would put, put a person's mortal soul into uh, jeopardy and that they might go to hell. But essentially, it's behaviours that work against our well-being. So these behaviours include being angry or greedy, being lazy or proud, lustful, envious and gluttonous. These are the seven deadly sins. But think for a moment how each of these behaviours would have actually been a good thing from our primitive ancestors' point of view. It would have increased their chances of survival. So being gluttonous, yeah, that's just eating as much as you can when you can. Envious is uh, looking at what someone else has got and, and seeing that it's probably a good thing to have uh, and if they have it, then you should have it. That would help you to survive. 
lustful? Well, of course, we're programmed to want to reproduce, and that's probably the most fundamental drive that any human has. Pride, laziness. Well, look at laziness. In the evolutionary past, people were chronically undernourished, and so to avoid expending effort when you didn't need to uh, was certainly a good idea. But today, with plentiful food, it's uh, considered to be, you know, laziness and not a good thing. So when we take each of these, uh, so for example, anger, well, that's an advantage as a warning to someone who's thinking about attacking you. Or it could act as a stimulus to fight ferociously if you were attacked. Greed makes a person acquire useful commodities like food and weapons and shelter, partners, animal skins, access to drinking water, all of these things improving their survival chances. Sloth, or laziness, as I just mentioned, uh, conserves energy. Food was scarce in the Pleistocene, and it would have been cold. People would have been cold and hungry uh, for most of the time. So... If you could uh, conserve energy, that was a good thing. What about pride? Well, this enhances self-esteem. High self-esteem improves survivability because it leads uh, someone to value themselves more highly and therefore be more likely to claim and fight for the resources that they need to survive. Envy makes a person more likely to acquire other people's goods on the supposition that if others value those goods enough to obtain them, then they would be worth uh, having. And uh, as I already mentioned, gluttony takes advantage of abundant food while it lasts uh, in order to lay down fat reserves and help someone through the famine. So if we recognise how much of our instinctive behaviours derives from our past, from our primitive past, then you're you're really just one step away from consciously choosing not to behave in that way. Some of our instincts still serve us well. So, for example, the instinct to love and nurture our children would be a good example. By being fully conscious and aware of what we're doing and thinking, we can choose to continue those behaviours that are helpful while discontinuing those that are unhelpful. To cultivate intuition, therefore, we must learn to put our ego in its proper place. Its proper place is as a survival tool from the evolutionary past And we need not use it unless our survival is threatened. So we keep it in its place where it's not interfering with what we're doing. In place of the ego is this ongoing awareness that the world and everyone in it is connected to each other and is dependent upon the whole rather than than just seeing the world as a disconnected and dangerous place. The ego still is a practical aspect of who we are, and it's useful at times, but it's not the totality of who we are. And it's certainly not what should be in control in the driver's seat. Without strong intuition, the ego takes over and soon we define ourselves in terms of our ego. Who are you? Most would say, my name is such and such, and these are the events of my life. This is my title. This is my status. Well, that's the ego talking. The fear of death. That's your ego worrying about about the fact that one day it will cease to exist. It will be extinguished. When you cultivate an awareness of your higher self via intuition, though, the fear of death lessens or becomes less because you uh, realise 
that your essential nature is, in fact, unchanged by death.